step four is acceptance. And I'd like to tell you this is not resignation. It doesn't mean you're giving up. It doesn't mean you're giving in. But I have a problem with the idea of fighting a disease. I think you fight cancer because you can cure cancer and get rid of cancer. But Parkinson's disease, this is part of you. This is something your body is doing. It's part of your body. It's sort of like aging. We can't really fight aging either. It's programmed into our genes. It's just with Parkinson's disease, you age a little bit faster. So I think sometimes the acceptance phase comes in accepting what's going on in your body instead of being afraid of it or fighting it and, and learning to cope with it and manage it rather than letting it manage you. This is the phase where people begin to handle work. Should I tell my colleagues? Should I tell my boss? Should I tell my children? Um, remember that you're still you. You're just you with Parkinson's disease. Uh, stress busting activities, um, spirituality. Most people become quite spiritual when they've been saddled with a chronic disease. Most people in the acceptance phase, invariably, especially Parkinson's people, I find it can, are very positive. Um, this is the time when people begin to plan, 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 plan their financial life, plan long-term health insurance, um, and network, begin to reach out to programs like this, work with the Parkinson's Disease Association in San Diego, and then now you begin into your learning phase, the network, the, the internet, books, pamphlets, people, groups, conferences such as this. Other emotions, panic, guilt, paralysis, sometimes people can just be paralyzed, not from Parkinson's, but from the emotions that go along with the diagnosis, and faith and hope, but often these these go in circles. You go from one phase to the next, one phase to the next. And it's not just a linear thing. You don't come to accept Parkinson's disease and then it's smooth going after that. You can go back into the depression, back into the panic, and that happens quite frequently. So in order to arm yourself with knowledge, let's go over what is clinical Parkinson's disease. It's a chronic progressive, what we call neurodegenerative disorder. It was described by James Parkinson's in 1817, called it the shaking palsy or paralysis agitans. It's a clinical diagnosis, not a laboratory diagnosis, and I'll talk, talk to you a little bit about that later. And you have to have two or more of these cardinal signs. I use the acronym TRAP. T is for tremor, R is for rigidity, A for akinesia, and P for postural instability. The disease is always slowly progressive, although in some people it can be so slow that you hardly know it's progressing. The tremor is a pill rolling tremor. Uh, pharmacists used to roll pills like this, and so it often looks like this, but it doesn't have to be. It can look like this. It can be a resting tremor or a postural tremor. It usually starts on one side, but most of the times it moves into the other side. It often affects both of the legs as well, and sometimes the head and neck and jaw, um, but rarely. The rigidity in Parkinson's is what we call cogwheeling rigidity. If you put a stiff muscle on top of a tremor, and you try to do this, it feels like a cogwheel. Um, you often have difficulty getting out of a chair, and stooped posture is very common in Parkinson's disease. It has other motor symptoms, such as dystonia, tightness in the feet, especially in the morning when they tend to turn in. Sometimes during the day, it can interfere with walking just as much as shuffling can. Um, I don't know if you can see this, but tiny, tight handwriting tends to trail off. Handwriting often deteriorates as well. And then there's a problem with um, postural instability. Even though you may have good balance when you're walking, if something trips you up like a curb or you're startled, you, you just can't right yourself. And, and that leads to falls. Loss of facial expression, very common in Parkinson's disease. In fact, I didn't even bother to run the video because this, this fellow, he just doesn't blink. And a lot of times this is misinterpreted by this person's angry all the time or this person's sad all the time. Other motor symptoms, the voice can become soft. Soft, raspy, hoarse, different. Sometimes slurred, mumbly. Sometimes you de develop difficulty with swallowing. Um, saliva tends to pull in the back of your uh, throat, making swallowing even more difficult. Freezing is very common in Parkinson's. You get going, or you, and then you suddenly stop and can't go any further. Um, difficulty turning, a lot of patients can't pivot turn. They have to turn on block like that. Difficulty turning in bed, very common. Drooling, uh, you don't swallow your saliva quite as automatically as you might otherwise, so the saliva comes out, um, and I already said freezing. 
But there are additional features to Parkinson's disease that are not motor, in other words, don't have much to do with moving. Um, cognitive mood, behavioral disturbances, personality changes, uh, olfactory disturbance. A lot of people with Parkinson's can't smell. They can only smell lemons. And this can begin years before you develop any motor symptoms. Sleep disturbances will go over, very common in Parkinson's. Constipation, gut problems, problems with your digestive system, very common. A little known thing is the seborrheic dermatitis, this flaky, oily scalp and, and um, around the eyebrows. Pain is uncommon in Parkinson's disease, but can occur, often occurs when you're off as opposed to on with your medicines. And autonomic disturbances, which we'll also go over. So sleep with Parkinson's it really falls into two categories. One, difficulty staying asleep. Two, difficulty staying awake. Um, under difficulty staying asleep, pa patients with Parkinson's often have insomnia, sleep fragmentation, something called REM sleep behavior disorder, where you act out your dreams, you thrash, sometimes you choke your spouse, um, which has been used in, in courtrooms as a defense. The limbs might move involuntarily, uh, restless leg syndrome, which is an irresistible compulsion to move the legs, often occurs right when you're lying down at night to go to sleep or rest, watching TV at the opera. And sleep apnea is actually more common in Parkinson's disease. That's the disorder where your, your spouse snores and gasps and wakes up in the middle of the night gasping for air, but they don't remember it. They fall right back to sleep. But they think they've had a good night's sleep, but actually they've been woken several times a night. Now, with regard to staying awake, well, if you have all these problems when you're trying to sleep, you're, of course, going to be a sleepy person the next day. Um, but there are also sleepy disorders due to the medications themselves. For instance, the dopamine agonist can cause something called sudden sleep onset, where for no reason at all, you take your drug, 30 minutes later, an hour later, you just fall asleep. That's very common at the wheel. <laughs> so you have to be careful about that or when you're not stimulated, when you're in a boring situation such as listening to my talk. <laughs>